Hey there, I'm Danny with the Barats support team, and today I'm going to walk you through how to remove and replace the cone burr on a conical grinder. In this video, I'm going to be using the Encore, but this process also applies to the Virtuoso, Virtuoso Plus, Preciso, Maestro, and Maestro Plus grinders. If you're trying to upgrade your Encore to the M2 burr set, all you need is the M2 cone burr and ring burr. Folks often ask us if they also need GB 2.0. They don't. The Encore comes with GB 2.0 already installed. For this project, all you'll need is a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, a wrench, a pair of pliers, and a Torx 10 screwdriver. Let's get started. Like all projects, we'll want to start by unplugging the grinder. Next, we'll take off all the accessories and remove the case. For further instructions on this, check out our case removal video. Now that the case is removed, we'll lift the safety interlock switch off its post and let it hang away from the grinder. We're then going to remove the three screws that hold the gearbox motor assembly to the chassis. I'm using my hopper's lid as a dish to hold my screws as to not lose any in the repair process. Next, lift the gearbox and motor assembly up and away from the chassis and unplug the motor cables from the circuit board. Remove the four screws securing the motor plate to the gearbox. Next, we'll remove the gear nut with some pliers and a counterclockwise turn. Use your thumb to help hold the drive gear in place while unscrewing the nut. If you're having trouble holding the drive gear in place, using a piece of cloth can help give you a better grip. Then we'll want to push the drive shaft through the gear. A screwdriver handle generally works to hammer the shaft down and out of the gearbox. You'll want to be sure not to use a metal object to hammer the drive shaft to avoid damage. Once the drive shaft and drive gear are free, you'll find one or more washers between the drive gear and the gearbox housing. There will also be several washers between the paddle wheel and the gearbox housing. We'll want to make sure we keep these in a safe place separate from the washers under the drive gear to avoid confusion later on. At this point, we'll remove the wing nut on the Encore. If your grinder doesn't have a wing nut, that's okay. The wing nut is also reverse threaded, so a right hand turn will loosen it. Using a pair of large pliers, a bench vise, vise grips, or something similar, we'll hold the cone burr in place as we use a 9mm box wrench to remove the drive shaft. Use a spare towel or cloth to avoid damage to the cone burr if you'd like to save it. An adjustable wrench can be used to remove the drive shaft as well, but if the parts are tight, a box wrench may be necessary. Now we can thread the new burr on by hand. The cone burr is reverse threaded, so a left turn will tighten it onto the drive gear. You won't need to tighten the new burr down with wrenches, as the burr will self-tighten with use. Next, we'll install the paddle wheel onto the drive shaft, making sure to line the two pegs on the paddle wheel with the two holes on the bottom of the cone burr. Then, we'll reinstall the washers and felt back onto the drive shaft. Next, we'll slide the assembly back through the gearbox housing and install the washers between the drive gear and gearbox. Press the drive gear into place until flush. The lip side of the gear should be visible and flush with the hex portion of the shaft. If you're having trouble getting the drive gear flush, make sure the paddle wheel pegs are still indexed into the cone burr. The old cone burr can be used as a block to help apply pressure with two hands to the drive gear. Then reinstall the washers and nut. These should be finger tight. Next, we'll reinstall the motor and the motor plate back onto the gearbox. When reinstalling, make sure to tighten the screws in an X pattern. The tensioning between these four screws can have an effect on the noise level of the grinder. Now we can plug the motor back in and reinstall the gearbox and motor assembly back onto the chassis. Set the safety interlock switch onto its post and reinstall the case. Now we can put all the accessories back onto the grinder, plug the grinder back in, and are ready to get back to grinding and enjoying some tasty coffee. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at support at Thanks for watching and happy grinding!